Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times. <coughs> it is now a glorious Monday, March 11th, 2024, the 13th anniversary of the Fukushima disaster. But speaking of disasters, we have one developing in our own country every bit as bad as the Fukushima nuclear meltdown of 2011. And that, of course, is the re-election of Donald Trump as our next president. Thank you, Joe Biden, for another four years at least of Donald Trump. Uh, so today, before I take the little dog to get his heartworm check, dive into our weekly Dump the Trump the Roundup Hive. Oh shit, I have the, do I have the wrong hat or the right, I'm just going to keep the Doomer hat on. I don't know where my, my uh, Trump hat has gotten to, but we're going to start off shockingly right here in the great state of Florida, right in the middle of Trumpville, I went to this uh, music festival this weekend, the Will McLean Music Festival in Ground Zero, Trumpville, and was absolutely shocked to find that the closer on Friday night was this uh, folk singer, named Grant Peoples, <clears throat> that is P-E-E-P-L-E-S, Grant Peoples, and this is how Grant Peoples led off his show in downtown Trumpville on Friday night. Uh, take it away, Grant Peoples, if I can figure out how to do this. This is called Judgment. All the people who continue to support and defend him, and those who remain silent too, they are all complicit now. They are all in on it. And there is no going back for them because they lack the character to admit they were wrong about it. So instead of withdrawing from the debacle, they cling ever tighter to its contrivance of hatred and fear and ratchet up their blind and commitment to buy into the fraud and to follow and believe without question. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Grant Peoples, uh, for summing that up without even using the T word. He doesn't like to utter the, the, the T-Word's name. And good for the Will McLean Music Festival for bringing Grant to the show. But, uh, you know, this fellow on Medium.com, Richard Lowenthal, has... I have determined Richard Lowenthal to uh, be the number one... Uh, anti-Trumper on medium.com. So we're going to start off and end with Richard. This is both of these written in their last week. Uh, okay, we're going to start off talking about a super successful lie is still a lie. In MAGA world, truth does not matter. Facts don't matter, and reality itself doesn't matter, or reality is whatever Donald Trump says it is. But guess what? That's proof it's a giant cult. That is cult-mandated, slavish groupthink by any definition, and shows us for sure that MAGA is a dangerous cult. In any nation still tethered to reality, 
Trump's endless, loud, and ridiculous claims of fraud and constant persecution would have made him a laughing stock and or a pariah, but instead the reverse happened and Trump's big lie became the truth for 65 to 70 percent of the GOP. That's the thing, the immensely dangerous thing about cults. They lure people into bizarre alternate realities like the ones Trump is constantly inventing and then convince their converts <coughs> that the cult leader's beliefs are the one and only truth. Unfortunately for MAGA devotees and for the U.S., most of Trump's assertions and beliefs are fictitious, paranoid, manipulative, or all three. The truly incredible, unprecedented problem facing the U.S. is that we have a lying, abusive, and vindictive con man and fraudster leading a popular and super influential political cult. And this cult leader is vying to become president of the United States for the second time as if the first time weren't disastrous enough. Let me put that a bit differently. A vicious, lying, super narcissistic cult leader is controlling one of our two major political parties, the GOP, and is poised to regain the presidency and wreak vengeance. I am your retribution on all who have ever opposed him or tried to bring him to justice, democracy and truth be damned. That is exactly the way evil despots and unprincipled cult leaders always talk, and it's how they think, plan, and abuse their power. The fact that Donald Trump has very successfully persuaded tens of millions of Americans to think in exactly the same awful paranoid way should terrify every American. The fact that Trump's fiery rhetoric often supports and sometimes incites right-wing violence should terrify every thinking American for this lying, cheating, manipulative, tyrant cult leader may soon be our top politician and president and the putative leader of the free world. Heaven help us. The sick, sad truth is that the U.S. is teetering right on the edge of mass paranoia and insanity and possibly mass violence largely due to the influence of Trump and his MAGA cult. Yet horrifyingly, we are doing very, very little to undo or counteract the madness. We might come back for more of Richard Lowenthal at the end of this if we have time. Okay. Let's go over to the letters to the editor at uh, the Los Angeles Times. Dear Trump supporters, you're better than this, right? Trump supporters, shame on you. You don't need me to tell you that the former well, and future president is a liar, a cheat, a fraud, a bigot, a bully, I could go on, but you know this and ignore it. What I want you to consider is, what does this say about you? Is this the kind of person your parents taught you to be or to support? Are these the values you grew up with? I doubt it, or there would be a lot more evil in this country than there already is. Yet, you succumb to this man's act. You are better than this. I am writing this not to get out the vote for President Biden, but rather to ask you about your own motives. <clears throat> for most of us, 
our family histories don't begin in America. We are a country of immigrants. To elect a person such as Trump is to spit in the faces of ancestors who struggled to come to this country to escape rulers like him. Thank you, Deborah Copeline, for that. Uh, what does Robert De Niro uh, have to say about Donald Trump in his latest uh, interview? Academy Award winning actor Robert De Niro blasted former President Donald Trump as a total monster during an appearance on Real Time with Bill Maher on Friday. Quote, quoting Robert De Niro, he is such a mean, nasty, hateful person. I never play him as an actor because I can't see any good in him. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing redeemable in him. <clears throat> And talking about uh, Trump winning the election, I just don't want to feel the way I did, and many of us don't. It can't be, it cannot be, if, well, when he wins the election, you won't be on this show anymore. He'll come looking for me. There will be things that happen that none of us can imagine. That's what happens in that kind of a dictatorship. It's what he says he wants. Let's believe him. Take him at his word. De Niro said he had trouble empathizing with Trump supporters, though he speculated that they have backed their candidate because of his message of outrage. Quote, they want to fuck with people, screw them, because they're unhappy about something, he said. Trump, he declared to an extended round of applause, is, quote, a sociopathic, psychopathic, malignant narcissist. He is a dangerous person. People somehow think he's going to be the answer to their prayers, whatever those are, God knows. <clears throat> People decide whether they want to oppose him or they want to let him just tell them what to do and own the schoolyard or their basketball court or whatever it is. He has got to be stopped. Good luck on that. But uh, I've noticed that this outfit called Salon, called Salon, is one of the excellent sources of Dump the Trumpy. So we're going to look at, read the, just the beginnings of two articles in Salon. This one titled, They've Told Me He's Jesus, Unpacking Trump's Empty Pseudo religion. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to go straight ahead uh, in an attempt to make better sense of Trump's claims of personal divinity, his fascist plans and use of Christianity. I recently asked a range of experts for their thoughts and insights. So this is Marcel Denacy, Professor Emeritus of Linguistic Anthropology and Semiotics at the University of Toronto. His new book is titled Politics, Lies, and Conspiracy Theories, A Cognitive Linguistic perspective. So Marcel Donisi is going to weigh in on Donald Trump. <clears throat> Donald Trump is a master at creating what Daniel Borston called in the 1960s pseudo-events. That is, events intended solely for publicity and self-aggrandizing purposes. 
from his angry tirades in front of the television cameras after a court session to his blistering oratory at rallies filled with hateful allusions to whoever stands in his way, Trump has grasped intuitively that pseudo-events like any form of spectacle or performance fiction have great appeal and can be deployed to tap into the tendency of people to react in unison as a group, as audiences in a theatrical setting. Over time, the pseudo-event becomes ritualized, as Neil Postman put it in 1985, since P.T. Barnum, America has evolved into a world in which there is no business but show business, describing the descent of politics into mere performance spectacle. In 1967, French philosopher Guy Debord used the expression society of the spectacle in reference to the circus type Spe the spectacles, the, the circus type fantasy world that had evolved in modernity, a world in which spectacles influence worldviews, beliefs, and behaviors rather than rational discourse or logical argumentation. Spectacles obfuscate the past, producing a type of never ending present aware of their power to enfold people's attention and affect their view of the present, Trump has used spectacles and hate-spewing humor to keep people engaged in his shenanigans. When the con artist, despot, comes wrapped in piety, he is at his most dangerous. This is a warning found throughout history. Trump's pious facade is not unlike that of Moliere's character Tartuffe in his 1664 play, whose subtitle the is The Impostor. Tartuffe is the embodiment of the master con artist, a pretentious person who fakes religious devoutness, convincing a benefactor that he is a moral person. Once invited into his house, Tartuffe uses every nefarious scheme possible to steal from his benefactor, creating chaos for everyone around him. The havoc that a false, pious hypocrite wreaks is astounding, a constant threat we all face with Donald Trump lurking in the background. And that goes on and on. Then I want to move over to this brand new article in Salon written by a self-described former former maggot, Chauncey de Vega, who has pulled, uh, I don't know if Chauncey is a man or a woman, uh, but pulled uh, their head out of their ass, titled, The GOP Can't Leave MAGA, Americans Must Electorally Mercy Kill the Republican Party. What if Donald Trump defeats President Biden and takes control of the White House in 2025, of course, as he will, he has already announced his plans to become the country's first dictator and to launch a reign of terror and revenge against his so-called enemies, a, as detailed in documents such as Project 2025, Agenda 47, and elsewhere, the infrastructure is being created right now to put Trump's neo-fascist plans to end multiracial pluralistic democracy in effect on day one. The so-called resistance will not have the courtesy of ramping up 
are mobilizing to stop dictator Trump's onslaught, it will be a shock and awe campaign visited upon the American people. Dictator Trump's reign of terror will be made even worse by the fact that is shown during recent speeches, interviews, and other events, he appears to be encountering severe difficulties in cognition, language, and, mem and memory. <clears throat> in a series of recent conversations with me here at Salon, Dr. John Gartner, a prominent psychologist and contributor to the best-selling book, The Dangerous case of Donald Trump, 27 psychiatrists and mental health experts assess a president has issued this warning, quote, not enough people are sounding the alarm that based on his behavior and in my opinion, Donald Trump is dangerously demented. In fact, we're seeing the, oppo the opposite among too many in the news media, the political leaders, and among the public, there is also this focus on Joe Biden's gaffes or other things that are well within the normal limits of aging. By comparison, Trump appears to be showing gross signs of dementia. This is a tale of two brains. Biden's brain is aging, Trump's brain is dementing, close quote. Uh, if Dr. Gardner and other medical professionals I have spoken to both uh, on and off the record about Trump's apparent mental and emotional challenges are in fact correct about how the corrupt ex-president will only get worse and not better the American people will then be confronted by a horrible reality where Donald Trump will be both a dictator and a mad king. In total, there will be a horrific synergy between an American pathocracy and how the worst people seek political power and a leader who appears to have a diseased mind which makes Trump easily manipulated by individuals and forces who are even more malevolent and dangerous than he is. In an attempt to make better sense of Donald Trump's obvious cognitive challenges and related behavior in the context of the country's democracy crisis in the 2024 election and what may happen next, I recently asked a range of experts for their thoughts and suggestions, and we're going to wind up. We'll, we've heard enough for Richard Lowenthal, so we're going to wind up with Norm Ornstein, an emeritus scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and contributing editor for The Atlantic. He is co-author of the best-selling book, One Nation After Trump, a guide for the perplexed, the, dis the disillusioned, the desperate, and the not yet deported. So, all right, take it away, Norm. Of course, it is increasingly obvious that Donald Trump is facing significant mental decline, and we know from those who are close to him but are no longer that this is not a new problem, but that is issue is eclipsed by the other reality. This is a narcissistic sociopath who will stop at nothing to create a vicious dictatorship built on retribution, racism, corruption, and sadism. He doesn't cushion it or try to hide his motives, and neither do those he will clearly rely on if he were to assume the presidency. Invoke the Insurrection Act 
to put down demonstrations against him with violence and brutality, blow up the federal government by firing tens of thousands of civil servants and replacing them with obedient flunkies, create concentration camps to house millions before deporting them, weaponize the Department of Justice, including the FBI, to go after his enemies and critics, blow up every alliance and replace it with ties to the most vicious dictators in the world. What is especially unsettling, though, is, is how our key mainstream journalistic outlets like the New York Times and the networks shrug their shoulders at all of this and treat him like he is a normal presidential candidate. It is no wonder that so many voters have no idea what a monster he is. If this were a healthy democracy, we would have a healthy Supreme Court. We don't. It is corrupt <clears throat> and not to be trusted when it comes to Trump. If this were a healthy democracy, we would have a press corps that would put a spotlight on what is real and not both sides everything while focusing on the horse race instead of on the consequences of the election. President Biden needs to use the power of his bully pulpit to focus over and over again on the consequences of electing this monster for our democracy and the fundamental health of our country. That the media are focused on Biden's age while ignoring Trump's infirmities is absolutely maddening. As James Fallows pointed out in the New York Times, there were headlines on Super Tuesday's outcome that Trump romped and Biden had trouble while Biden got a significantly higher percentage of votes than did Trump, which tells us all too much about media bias. Mainstream media may not consciously want Trump to win, but you would not know it from the frame of the coverage. So, uh... Alright, uh, let's just wrap it up uh, one more time with Richard Lowenthal. Uh, we're still eight months out from the election and a lot can and will happen between now and then. However, barring a truly miraculous turnaround or wholesale transformation of our American mindset, which looks increasingly unlikely, we will face one or more of the dire nightmare scenarios uh, and or constitutional crises I described in a former article. And don't be fooled. Our situation really is dire. Our media are not facing our situation head on or dealing with it adequately. Our politicians are not dealing with our situation head on. Our pundits and influencers are not dealing with it head on either and our justice system is taking its sweet time and fumbling the ball along the way. In fact, the awful truth is that no one is dealing with our dire situation adequately. So I am asking again with even more urgency, what will it take for America to wake up from this burgeoning nightmare. Well, <laughs> I guess we're going to find out uh, next year. And Donald Trump heads back to the White House. Uh, anyway, 
I've got to go see if my dog has heartworms or not. My guys, this country has heartworms. You have heartworms like this country. I do not need that news, little dog.